Hello and welcome to our videos about what's new in EDIUS 8.2. Grass Valley have done some of their own videos about 8.2 which were very very good. They concentrate on the new primary color corrector and the motion tracking. They don't really talk about anything else although those are the two biggest new features inside of EDIUS 8.2 but you can go and have a look at those in depth on the Grass Valley website. I'm going to try and cover things slightly differently in these videos here and cover the other new features as well. So the first thing I want to do is to look at the new color correction filter, which is called the primary color corrector, which you'll find with all the other color correction filters here. I did a tutorial recently about using log footage and LUTs in various programs. At the time I said you couldn't apply a LUT inside of EDIUS. One of the things this lets you do is to apply a LUT. So I'm going to go to this clip, which I did use in that previous tutorial, and then just take the primary color corrector and drop it on top. Double click on the primary color corrector in the info window and up it pops. Here you can see you've got an effect with lots and lots of different parameters. In fact, so many that it pops off the bottom of the screen. When it comes to LUTs, I just use this bit at the top. The first thing you see, it says color space, and you've got source and destination. Source is what you're going to apply to this clip. Destination is basically what the color space of the timeline will be. You're probably not going to change the destination. The only reason you might change the destination is instead of making this up as a normal color space image, you want to make it up in something else like one of these log formats. So you're probably not going to fiddle with that one very much. The main one you'll fiddle with is this one at the top. So I've got a clip here that was filmed on a GH4 and I want to stick a LUT on it to make it look like proper footage as opposed to this very sort of flat V-log format. And the way to do that is you go to source, click on the drop down and from the list I'm choosing this one, Panasonic. Bang, you do that and it instantly applies a LUT to the image. Won't make it look perfect, but what it will do is take it and make it a lot more like a regular image. As you can see with this one, I think there's a little bit too much color in the cars there, and the highlights have been blown out a bit. Try this on a whole variety of GH4 footage, and with some ones it comes out perfect straight away, with some they look a bit overexposed, with some they're a bit under, so I'll come down and fiddle with the rest of the settings to sort it out. Looking at those lists of sources, you can see you've got all sorts of different color spaces. So there's ones for different Sony cameras and Canon cameras and a couple of standard ones. I'll only use this kind of LUT if I filmed in a log or a raw format in the first place. Ideally, I would also be able to load my own LUTs up. I've only got the ones that are preset by Grass Valley at the moment. With 8.2, that's what we've got. We've got a bunch which Grass Valley have made up. In a future version, we'll get the option to put our own LUTs in here as well. I've been using the primary color corrector here on GH4 shots because I do a lot of filming on the GH4, which you'll probably know if you've seen a few of my tutorials. And with the GH4, I have to pop in here and choose Panasonic and then fiddle to get a LUT applied to my clips. Actually, the primary color corrector will auto detect what kind of clip you're putting on the timeline and apply the correct LUT accordingly. So with different types of footage, Panasonic Vericam and Sony RAW footage, this should automatically set the source color space. So you actually, all you'd have to do is just drop the primary color corrector on there, a color space is set. You'd only come in here to adjust it. It just doesn't happen to do it with GH4 footage, which you know is fair. The vlog mode for the GH4 was an add-on at a late stage, and obviously the GH4 is quite a cheap camera to be doing a, a log mode, so it doesn't quite do it as well as some of the other things. But with most cameras, you'll find the primary color corrector will automatically set the source color space for you, so all you'll have to do is drop it onto a clip and actually use it. But anyway, got a lot, put it on there, it's obviously made it into a, a much more usable clip. Now at that point I could just come out of this and say job done. Now I'm not going to because I want to fiddle with it a bit more. But of course being a filter you can just do things like save your own presets. You just go to the information window, right click on the effect, say save as current user preset and then give it a name. And now I can drop that onto any clip I like and it instantly makes it into something which is more usable. And like any effect, of course, I can drop that onto loads of clips at once. Dropping a LUT on there is only the beginning. What I really need to do is to adjust it to make it look how I want. Now, because it was filmed in a V-Log format in the first place, I've got a bit more detail to play with in the highlights and the shadows. 
that's kind of the point of using that kind of format compared to filming it in a regular mode like this clip. I'm going to go back to the primary color corrector on this clip, open it up, and for a start I think everything's a bit too bright so I'm going to bring down the exposure. As you can see that's bringing me in a bit more detail up here across the roof and in the highlights. Then it's a matter of coming down here and fiddling with all of these settings. So the obvious stuff, you've got white balance and tint. This shot, the white balance is fairly okay. You know, the color is not too blue or too yellow, so I'm going to not fiddle with those two. I'm just going to come down to these here, which are lift, gamma, and gain. These are roughly the equivalent of shadows for lift, midtones for gamma, and gain for highlights. For each of them, I've got four sliders. The top one adjusts the overall brightness. So if I grab that and drag it one way, the highlights are getting brighter. Drag it and go another way, the highlights are getting darker. I've even got some blue in the sky here, which I couldn't see before. Now, if I wanted to just make the gain a little bit redder or a little bit greener, I could just grab hold of an individual slider. You know, I can turn down the amount of red, or turn up the amount of red and green and so on. And you'll notice these sliders here are also changing the little dot over there. But the beauty of having sliders, as opposed to just using the dot, because this dot is very like the thing we have in the three-way color corrector, the beauty of using the sliders is you can be more accurate. As I'm moving that slider up and down, it's moving that dot in lots lot smaller distance. And I can even come into the numbers here and just drag up and down on them, or mouse wheel, you know, all the usual stuff you can do with an EDIUS text box, and get very fine adjustments. So we have a bit more control here over the colour in the midtones and the shadows and the highlights than we do in the three-way colour corrector. I've kind of messed that up, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to reset this particular effect. So you'll notice next to the gain filter there, I have that little typical EDIUS reset button, which will reset just the gain. I've got that for each of the parameters. Let's reset the exposure. Or down here, I've got a reset for the whole thing. So down here, there's an undo and a redo, and that basically gets me right back to the start of my completely flat image. I'm going to stick with GH4 LUT on again, take down the exposure a tad, then I'm going to bring the gain down to get more into those highlights. I'm going to up the gamma to brighten up the midtones and maybe take the lift down a bit to make the shadows darker. Down here we've got typical boxes for comparing a before and after image, just like you get in any of the color correction filters in EDIUS. So click on that one, you can see a before and after. This is the after and this is the before. This is where the highlights were a bit blown out. And this is the one I just fiddled with. And obviously you can just click on any of those and it changes which bit is the before and which bit is the after. And you've also got this little eye here. That's where you would move on to another clip, click on the eye and it takes a kind of snapshot of what that looks like. Move back to the one you're fiddling with and doing a half and a half. And now you can compare the other shot to this shot. The other shot is the same angle filmed on the GH4, but with regular settings as opposed to V-Log settings. But anyway, let's come back to this one. So, so far, straightforward. You will notice that as I change like the red on the lift or the green on the lift, it does adjust the brightness as well. So you take some green out, it starts to get a bit darker as well as a bit less green or redder. If you have set up some kind of different color correction on that and you change the brightness, they all stay the same relative to one another, it's just the whole thing gets brighter or darker. Let's move down further on this thing. The next and pretty obvious thing is saturation. You know, you can change the amount of saturation in the image. Okay, I'm going to knock it down a bit because I think it was maybe a little bit too green. And then the final thing we have is some RGB curves. So you can see you've got a curve here which is a bit like the YUV curve. So you've got the blacks at the bottom and the whites at the top. And you've got a couple of points in the middle. It's basically only got five points. Five points is what I tend to use on the YUV curves anyway. But you do only have five points. You can't click and add another one. But what I can do is grab these and move them around. What I tend to do with a YUV curve for any particular image is I'll grab a point near the bottom and I'll just drag it down and make the blacks a bit blacker and I'll grab one in the middle and I'll drag it up and I'll make the midtones a bit lighter. I could have done my adjustments on here as opposed to fiddling with these sliders but I tend to do a bit of both. This curve here is showing me the brightness levels. If I click on the R it just shows me the reds. If I grab on that that makes the midtone reds a bit brighter or darker grab on the greens, makes the greens a bit darker or lighter, and obviously you can do the, the shadows and the highlights, and the same for the blue. So you've got 
four different curves. You've either got all of them combined or red, green and blue separately. Obviously I've made a mess of it, so I'm going to reset that particular thing. What I like about this Y curve compared to the, the one that's in the YUV curve filter is that if I did something like this in the YUV curve, it tends to make the color disappear. If I do it with these curves, the color stays there. You'll also notice you've got a bunch of sliders down here. These sliders relate to these dots. So the highlight slider, that's the dot right at the top. One of them is going to move it left and right. One of them is going to move the dot up and down. The lights is the second dot down. Midtones, obviously the one in the middle. Darks is the that fourth one there. And then shadows is the last one. Now, obviously at the moment, I'm fiddling with these levels on the R curve, which is why every time I change something there, I can get drastic reds or not, because I'm fiddling with just the red curve. If I change to the Y curve, these sliders relate to the Y curve. The reason you've got sliders is just like it is with these settings up here, you can get more refined by dragging around with the slider or by moving up and down here with the mouse. One of the complaints we had about the three-way color corrector, which is still one of my favorite color correction filters, is that it was a bit hard to be very refined and subtle when it came to color correction because of the wheels. It was too easy to drag a rather large area out instead of doing a subtle connection. So it's nice to have sliders so we can be a bit more subtle. Anyway, I made a mess of that, so I'm going to just click on that and reset it. And now all my curves adjustments have gone, but everything else is still intact. So it's a really nice color correction filter. Unlike the three-way color corrector, there's no automatic settings. You have to do everything by eye, but it's a lot more subtle and you can get better results with it. You don't have to use it on a flat clip. So I've done it on there and I'm quite happy with that shot. Looks a little bit flat here on the computer screen, but if I look at the TV, which is attached to my Blackmagic gizmo, it actually looks perfect there. Let's go to the other version of that shot, which is the one that's just filmed with normal settings with the GH4. And I'm just going to bung the primary color corrector on that. Double click on it, just like the previous shot. It's a bit blown out in the highlights, so let's go to the gain and bring down the gain and see what I can bring back in those highlights. Yeah, actually that's, that's not bad at all bringing back more details than I was able to bring back before. Let's make the shadows darker. And then of course you just fiddle around like we do normally with any of these things and get some settings that you particularly like. But you can see you can still adjust an image even if it's not in log format using the primary color corrector. So you'll use it for tons and tons of stuff. I've still got plenty of times when I'd use the three-way one because I think it's nice and easy, especially with the simple click to try and set the color. But I'll use this for much more refined editing. If I just compare those two, you'll notice that with my fiddling and bringing down the exposure and so on, I've now got details in the highlights on the one that wasn't in Vlog, but the one that was done in Vlog, definitely better. There's more information in there. That's kind of the point of the Vlog setting on the camera, is there's more information, so once you've fiddled with it, you can get a better shot than fiddling with one that isn't in Vlog. Having used the GH4 quite a lot in vlog mode, I have to say it's not perfect for everything. There are times when I will use vlog and there are times when I won't use vlog. It is just a useful thing to be able to do. Let's have a look at this clip. This clip is another GH4 clip which was filmed in log mode. And if I turn on the primary color corrector, that's just whacked on my LUT, my GH4 LUT. I'm going to open it up and I want to bring back some details here in the highlights. So I can try taking down the exposure a bit. All of a sudden, wham, you see how much more information there is there in the sky. If I'm flying with the lift, I'll make the dark areas a bit brighter, or I might come down to the curves and just try and add a bit more contrast by bringing the bottom point down in there and moving the gamma up. If I do a before and after on that, you can see that was the original with the LUT applied, and that's the one that's got a lot more details up there in the highlights, but I've still got details on the ground and details on the people. Interesting thing you might notice here about the split view, if you apply a LUT up here, the split view here will show you the difference between the shot with the LUT applied and the adjustments that you've made afterwards, which I think is definitely the best option. You know, I wouldn't want to see a completely flat thing here, that's totally useless. I want to see what it looks like with the LUT and then just with my fiddling afterwards. So let's come to this shot which is actually a piece of AVCHD footage and you'll probably even recognize it if you've seen some of our other tutorials. This is the correctly 
shot to shot. And what we did on this one was just simply to put the wrong white balance on the camera. What I'm gonna do is drop the primary color corrector on there, double click on it, and this is where the temperature control comes in very handy because obviously wrong white balance, that means I've filmed it with the wrong temperature. I obviously need to make it more yellow. So I'm just gonna grab this slider and drag it across and correct the temperature, which as you notice, that's probably right. This thing's still a bit dark, so I'm going to need to brighten it up. So I'm gonna take the exposure and up that but there we are, pretty much sorted that shot out just by adjusting the temperature and the exposure. If I want to see what it's like compared to the correct shot, which is this one, I'm just gonna come over, click on it, click me little eye, pop back to this shot, and then do a half and half. I'm gonna move the percentage across a bit because I'd like to compare the two faces, and yeah, yeah, that's, that's pretty good. Um, actually, it's probably a little bit greener this side is a bit greener than that one, so maybe if I take the tint control and adjust that, maybe they'll get a bit closer. And then I'll come down to the curves and maybe make the whole thing just have a little bit more contrast and maybe brighten up the face a bit more. Pop back to a full view and now I can see what it looks like. So let's see, compared to the correctly filmed shot, pretty close. If I turn off the eye, it will compare it to the original. As you can see, mega blue. Looked like it wasn't rescuable at all. Actually came out pretty good. I found I've done a lot of fixing on shots just by fiddling with the temperature slider rather than fiddling with these. I use these to refine stuff. The temperature one's getting it pretty close to start off with. I actually think that now looks better than this one, which was the correctly exposed shot. I think this is a little bit flat. So I'm gonna take another primary color corrector, dump that on there open up that primary color corrector and well colors pretty much right but let's let's just add a little bit more shadow and brighten up the mid-tones a bit see very easy to do using this filter now all through this i am working in a 10-bit project whenever you're doing color correction it's nicer to work in a 10-bit project if you can because the results will come out a bit better if i come up to the settings and project settings here let's just go and change my current setting You'll notice here I'm in a high def project and it's set to 10-bit. So Edius can do 10-bit, I might as well work in 10-bit. I'm in Edius 8, I've got a Blackmagic device outputting to my TV, they can all cope with doing 10-bit, so why not work in 10-bit? If I was using something like an HD Spark, which can only do 8-bit, maybe I'd stay in 8-bit. Other thing you might notice about the primary color corrector, there is no keyframing. In the three-way color corrector and filters like that, Obviously you have an area for keyframing so it can start at one brightness and go to another brightness. There isn't in the primary color corrector. Don't know if they'll add that in the future. To be honest, most of the time when I'm doing color correction, I don't keyframe it because it's the same all the way through a shot. Of course, just because we've got a fancy new filter, there's no reason why you can't carry on using the three-way color corrector or even combine them. Put the primary on there, I could click on here and try and set the white balance automatically. If I wanted to boost the color in the mid-tones, maybe I'd throw one of those on to boost the mid-tone color whilst doing the rest of the color correction in the other filter. It's a definite improvement, very useful if you're using log footage, but it's just a definite improvement all round in the color correction abilities for EDIUS.